All right, so um, let's continue our discussion of uh, stockholders' equity, specifically via the issuing of stock, whether it be common stock, preferred stock, whatever the case may be. And so what we need to talk about a little bit is, you know, we've talked about stock having um, either a par value or no par value. And we said that generally speaking, stock does have a par value. But what we also need to talk a little bit about is the fact that uh, stock is not necessarily going to be sold by the issuing corporation for the par value. So if we have if we have some stock that has a one dollar par, that's not what we're selling that stock for as a rule. Generally, we're going to be uh, selling it for more. We're going to be selling it for more than par. Now, the par never changes um, unless we do something with a with a stock split or something like that. So, if we have a a company that is unsuccessful. The, the market price or what we can sell it for could be below par value, but that's a fairly rare situation. So um, I rearranged this uh, handout a little bit we've got here. I want to start with some a little bit of terminology. So we're kind of starting in the middle of the page. It says here uh, the excess of issue price over par of common stock is termed a discount income dividend or premium. So um, if we recall our discussion uh, about bonds and we said that a bond that sells for exactly the face of the amount is said to be issued at par, well anything over that we called it a premium. And this is what we're going to have with regard to stock as well. Now we don't have to amortize this premium this is a different situation. All we're saying here is that we're going to sell the stock for more than the par value of the stock. Okay. If we had a situation where we sold the stock for less than par, then we would be selling it at a discount. But I just want to I want to point out, you know, with with bonds, this can go either way, and. Uh, and it's it's all based upon you know market interest rate and that type of thing. Here we're dealing with a, a completely different situation, where the market value of a of a share stock is generally going to be in excess of the par, because contrary to some of the examples in your textbook, par is set almost always at a really really small amount like a dollar, uh, sometimes even a penny. So it's uh, we're almost always going to actually sell stock at a premium and that is just the amount of money uh, above par. So if we had a one dollar par stock that was selling at five dollars we would say that the premium on that stock is four dollars. That's five minus the five dollar selling price minus the one dollar um, par value. Okay so let's go ahead and go up here to the top of the page probably where that question should have been. And let's look at a, at a question here. I'm right here where it says Alma Corporation issues 1,000 shares of $10 par common stock at $14 per share. When the transaction is recorded, credits are made to, and we've got some choices here, 14,000 to common stock, common stock 10,000 and paid in capital in the excess of par 4,000. And then some other choices here, common stock 4,000 paid in capital in excess of par 10,000. Okay, so let's bring our calculator over here. We've got 1,000 shares, and we're going to sell it for $14 a share. And that's going to give us 14,000. But we need to recognize that we have two components here. We have par, and then we have the amount that's in excess of par, or the amount that is in excess of this $10. So... We, so we know that we got 14,000. So if we just were to take the $10 par times the 1,000 shares that we've actually issued, we get 10,000. So if we look at choice B, we say, okay, we're going to um, credit common stock for $10,000. $10, uh, that is the amount of par. 
and then the paid in capital in Exapar is this $4,000 here. That's the difference between the $14,000 that we received and the $10,000 par value. And this is going to end up being the correct answer. All right. So um, let's see. It doesn't look like we can get rid of that uh, calculator yet. It says if Dakota Company issues 1,500 shares of $6 par common stock for 75000 what happens? So let's just see here. We know that received $75,000 because, well, else this? But let's see what the par value of those shares is. We have 1,500 shares times a $6 par equals $9,000. So just as, as in this example up here, we have this $75,000 is made up of two parts. $9,000 is the par value of the stock. And $66,000 is going to be something else. So we have here, they're trying to do the same thing up here. Common stock will be credited for $75,000. Well, it will be credited, but not for $75,000. Paid in capital and excess of par will be credited for $9,000. Well, it will be credited, but not for 9000 So here we have the correct answer. Paid in capital and excess of par will be credited for 66000 That is this, that what we have here is we've taken the 75000 So we've taken the 75000 that we received minus the $9,000 uh, common stock par value, and that's going to give us 66000 So if we were going to do this actual journal entry, what we would be looking at here, right, is we would be seeing cash is going to be debited for $75,000. Uh, common stock is going to be credited for $9,000. And then paid in capital excess of par is going to be for $66,000. Okay. And I apologize, I don't have a lot of room to write there, so that's a little bit sloppy. But you get the point, hopefully. All right, let's see what else we have here. It says, all of the following are normally found in a corporation stockholder's equity section except common stock. Well, you learned from day one that common stock uh, is a part of the stockholder's equity section excess of issue price over par, dividends and arrears, and retained earnings. So let's look at choices A and D. Hopefully, if we've learned anything at all in our uh, beginning accounting classes, we know uh, for certainty that common stock and retained earnings are going to be in the stockholders' equity section of uh, the balance sheet. However, we do not ever mention dividends. And we certainly don't mention uh, dividends in arrears. So um, this is actually going to be uh, our answer. We must list, we, we're going to break out paid in capital into common stock and uh, excess of issue price over par or paid in capital uh, in excess of par, however you want to uh, put it. Uh, so B, A, B, and D are going to be there. Choice C, however, is not going to be to be there. We did this question already, so let's move up to this one here, or down to this one here, however you want to look at it. It says, what is uh, the total stockholders' equity based on the following uh, account balances? Okay, so it looks like we're going to have to do some very, very basic math. Now, there's a little bit of a hook in here, and depending on exactly uh, which order uh, you're studying this topic, you may or may not have an advantage in answering this question. We just said that uh, common stock is going to be on the balance sheet. So we need to include that figure. Paid in capital in excess of par, 90000 This is the amount over par that we sell the stock for. Okay, so that's another plus. Retained earnings are all of the earnings from business operations that we haven't paid out in dividends, so it's being retained by the business. This is certainly a part of stockholders' equity. 
Okay, and now we're at $655,000. And we've got one more item here, treasury stock. Now, if you don't know what treasury stock is, you don't know what to do with this. You don't know if we need to do anything with it. You don't know if uh, we need to add this 15000 or whether we need to um, subtract it. So we need to, just in case we don't know already, uh, what, what we're going to do with treasury stock, this is stock that the company has uh, repurchased. Okay. So when this process uh, happens, treasury stock is essentially a contra uh, equity account. And so it is a contra account to paid in capital or ownership investment. So um, it has actually a debit balance. And so as any adjustment account or as any contra account uh, is concerned, it's going to work the opposite. So common stock, paid in capital, retained earnings, all of these have normal credit balances. This is a debit balance. Therefore, it is actually a subtraction. And so we're going to end up, what we can do is we can kind of put a parentheses around the 15,000 and we can come up with a final answer of $640,000. And that is going to be our answer. All right, so we've got a lot of stuff going on here, and this next question looks like, this may take us a minute. Uh, let's see, how much room do we have to work with here? Yeah, that might work. Okay, it says, using the following accounts and balances, prepare the stockholders' equity section of the balance sheet. 50,000 shares of common stock are authorized, and 5,000 shares have been uh, reacquired. Mm-hmm. Okay. All right. Very good. So they've given us some information here, and these are actually all of the balances uh, that we have. So, you know, you may ask yourself, well, why can't I just essentially do what we did uh, up on the top? And the answer is, well, that's because that's not what they're asking us to do. Um they want us to prepare the stockholders equity section balance sheet. All right. So let's go ahead and do that. It says that we have had 50,000 shares authorized. Well, uh, that's common stock and it's $50 par. So let me bring my calculator over here. If we were to take $50 par stock, and we were to multiply that by 50,000 shares were authorized, we're going to come up with 2.5 million. Okay. And looks like our value for common stock is 1.25 million, which is exactly half of this figure here. So essentially what this tells us is that we have issued 50,000 shares. That's the amount authorized. But we've instead issued... 25,000 shares. Okay, so 25,000 shares. So what I'm going to do here to set this up is I'm going to, I'm just going to make a, a section for my paid in capital. Okay, and I'm going to say common stock. Fifty shares uh, authorized 25,000 shares issued so 50k shares authorized 25,000 issued all right and I'm going to plot that just as the number that they gave us and that's going to be 1 million two hundred and 50,000. Then we can just take this paid in capital in excess of par and we can uh, add that to it. We're going to word it a little bit differently. We're going to say, and it doesn't really matter, we're going to say excess of issue price over par.
and that's going to be eight hundred thousand dollars and if we add these two figures up we're going to come up with let's see here plus eight hundred thousand is two million and fifty thousand dollars and so what we're going to say is that the Uh, paid in capital for common stock common stock is the uh, two million and fifty thousand dollars we also have another paid in capital item here called paid in capital from the sale of treasury stock and that's $42,000, okay? So this is a different type of paid-in capital. And if we know anything about treasury stock, uh, we know that we can't have gains uh, on the sale of treasury stock, but we can add it to equity. So um, all we have to really do is just write down paid-in capital, uh, treasury stock, forty two thousand that's going to give us total paid in capital of two million ninety two thousand that's the two million fifty thousand here plus the forty two thousand uh, in additional equity uh, from the sale of treasury stock for more than what we paid for it. Now let's move up here. So let's see, we've used the 800,000, we've used the 42,000. Now we have retained earnings and uh, all we have to do here is just enter that number. And what is it? It's 4 million three five zero okay and then um, we've got treasury stock now these are th this treasury stock is um, is going to be treasury stock that we have repurchased but we haven't we haven't sold it yet okay so when we purchase this this was Remember, this is a contra account to paid in capital, so we're going to issue that as a negative. And then so what we could say is, we could say that um, our total stockholders' equity is going to be equal to total paid in capital of two million ninety two thousand plus our retained earnings amount of four million three hundred and fifty thousand minus uh, treasury stock that we currently are holding that we've repurchased as a company of one hundred and fifty five thousand and that's going to give us six million two hundred eighty seven thousand in total stockholders equity okay